What's going on there, Baby Dragon Squad? Today, I want to do a quick recap of all the news that we got announced yesterday. We got a lot of cards being released from Extreme Forces, a new rarity collection, as well as cards like the new Security Dragon and Premium Pack for the OCG, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to kind of go through all the cards. Yesterday, I really only focused on one card in particular. I made a late second video last night talking about the brand new Giant Trunade card, which honestly, I think is just as powerful as the old Giant Trunade, just because honestly... Uh, other than continuous spells and traps that are chained that are effectively floodgates, it's not really going to matter too much if you're, you know, if you're using a backer deck, your opponent is just going to devastate you with this card. Um, I think it's just really, really absurd. But we're going to talk about all these new cards. This is all courtesy of YGO Organization. Uh, we're going to get into the Extreme Force leaks. At the end of this video, if you guys happen to enjoy it, make sure you guys share this video, smash a like button. Uh, it really helps the channel grow lately. YouTube has been really tough on content creators. So make sure you guys at least have like notifications enabled or something. So you guys are at least watching the videos. Because um, lately, YouTube has been really, really rough with their... Uh, with their uh, system. So we're going to get into it. So first and foremost, we have a bunch of cards from Extreme Force. Uh, it's it's wild. There's a lot of cards here. And, and it seems like there's a lot of cyber support. It seems like it's uh, a definitely a huge focal point what they're focusing on. We have uh, Striping Partner here. And mind you, this is the first time I'm looking at some of these cards. So I may be off on uh, my interpretation of some of their effects or how effective they might be. But uh, we got something called Striping Partner, uh, an effect monster. It says it can't be normal summoned or set. And you have to summon it by its own effect. Uh, you can only use this card's effect uh, once per turn. If a monster that was activated on your field is negated, you can special summon this card from your hand. So that's kind of cool, I guess. Uh, when this card is special summoned, you can target one level four or lower cybers monster in your graveyard special summon. It. So that's kind of interesting. It's kind of um, I don't know. It's kind it's kind of like a almost like a pseudo hand trap for cybers in a way. I'm not sure how how well that ties into their overall theme, but. Uh, next we have Flick Clown. I heard a little bit about this card. It says if you control two or most cybers monsters other than this card, and there are no cards in your hand, you can pay a thousand life points to draw a card. I think that's really cool. The only catch, and I would say issue, is the fact that you have no, you have to have no cards in your hand. I haven't really seen any pure cybers decks or or combo based cybers decks, so maybe that'll be relevant in some kind of weird combo deck. It's it always seems that cards that allow you to draw cards uh, for the you know for the simple payment of paying life points with i would say really no real drawback for the most part other than the stipulation that you have to have no cards in your hand uh can potentially be pretty useful so uh we'll see how this is if this is ever used in, in or any cybers variants so that'd be kind of cool uh next we have meta metal bullet dragon i i've heard about the, these magic bullets i'm not sure if this is part of them i guess these are metal bullets or metal rockets i don't know i keep hearing a lot about them i keep hearing very uh, diverging and pieces of information some people are saying they're gonna be really good some people are saying they're gonna be really bad obviously with every new archetype they're always uh, extremely hyped up and people are just always interested in them but uh, this card actually i saw this one last night this actually seems really cool it says when a link monster's effect that targets this card on the field is activated uh you can destroy this card and destroy all cards your opponent controls that are in the same column as the zone that this card was occupying. So that's kind of cool. But then the second catch is that during the end phase, it's kind of like a Sacred Phoenix of Nephthys in a lot of ways, where if it's in your grave because it's destroyed about our card effect and sent there from the field this turn, you can special summon one rocket monster from your deck. So instead of summoning itself back, uh, it summons a monster from your deck. So that's kind of cool. And it has to be a rocket monster. So uh, that's kind of cool. I feel like this card will probably find its place. It's a uh, it's a level four monster. It's rel relatively respective stats. So I'm sure this will probably find a way uh, to be used in some of these decks. Next we have Magical Beasts. Magical Beast Medusa. I guess there's a new archetype called Magical Beast. I'm not really too familiar with it. It seems like it's a pendulum archetype, so I'm kind of surprised that they're still kind of pushing this, but I guess they want to keep an even balance uh, between all the different mechanics that they constantly created. So it's not like they're just getting overshadowed by links and that, you know, synchros aren't, you know, Oh, the, the synchros are just forgotten about or XYZs are forgotten about. I feel like Konami is doing kind of a good job of kind of balancing it out and constantly releasing about an even amount of support for all the different, uh, you know, all the different mechanics. So that's kind of cool. We have this. It's a pendulum scale four. Its pendulum effect is if this card, if this, if there is no card other, if there is no other card in your pendulum zone, you can target a monster in your grave that you can place a spell counter on, destroy this card. And if you do special summon that monster, and if you do place one spell counter on it, that seems kind of cool. I don't know. Maybe that's like some like, New spell counter type stuff with uh, magicians. What is that monster? I forget, I forget what it's called. Magical. What is that? What's that monster that like lets you? Uh, I'm blanking out. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's like a. It was used in a lot of loop dot decks, but um, it's pretty wild. That seems kind of cool. I'm sure someone will find a way to use that. Each time a spell counter is activated, you can place a spell counter on this card when that spell card resolves, and then once per turn during your battle phase, you can move from play two spell counters on your side of the field, then target one face a monster, half that monster's stats. So uh, that's kind of cool. Um, 
I, I guess the first effect seemed kind of useful, I suppose. I'm not sure if that's going to be used at anything. Uh, Magical Beast Basilisk? B Basilisk? Oh, Magical Beast Basilisk. Okay, uh, let's see what we got here. If there's no other card in your Pendulum Zone, you can destroy this card, and if you do shuffle one face up Spellcaster Pendulum Monster from your extra deck, uh, except itself, then you draw a card. So that's kind of cool. That's uh, There's a lot of Spellcaster Pendulum Monsters out there. I mean, Skull Crobat Joker is a Spellcaster. Um, obviously, a lot of, a lot of the... Uh, <laughs> A lot of the Performage stuff was Spellcasters before it got hit. Uh, I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of other useful Spellcasters out there other than the Magicians right now. The Magicians are definitely like the main ones. Uh, let's see. It says each time a Spellcast is activated. So it seems like the last... Uh, this part is kind of the, the same. Each time a Spellcast is activated, you can place a spell counter on this card when that spell resolves. So that seems kind of be the same thing between uh, these two monsters. And then you can remove from play... Oops. Uh, you can remove from play three spell counters on uh from your field you target a mythical mystical beast or mythical beast card from your pendulum zone or face up from your extra deck to the hand so uh, it's kind of like compulsory evacuation device from your pendulum or your extra deck to your hand so that's kind of cool almost like a climate change in some ways for them next we have a water warrior tuner monster that's level one that's kind of interesting let's see what it is it says when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent by direct attack you can target one monster in your graveyard special summon in a defense position i don't know how useful that'll be i mean uh this guy has a hundred attack. He's a warrior, a warrior monster. I guess you can technically search him with Rhoda since he's a warrior and he's water. But other than that, I don't know. The effect is cool. It's just that I don't know how fat, like how frequently that's going to be resolving. Uh, we have Overtex Codals. I, I don't know if that's a typo. Co Codals, Codals. I'm not sure. But it's a dark dinosaur special summon effect monster. Twenty seven hundred attack, which is quite sizable. Uh, and I heard about this guy. This card is supposed to be pretty cool for dinosaurs. You can special summon this card by shuffling five of your banished dinosaurs into the deck. So basically, you just shuffle your banished dinos into the deck. You can only use its effects once per turn. And then you can, when your opponent uses a spell or trap, you during uh, other players' turn, you're able to destroy a dinosaur monster from your hand or field. And if you do, negate the activation if you destroy it. So that's really cool. It's kind of like a... Uh, like a mix between a Lagia and a Dolka in some ways. That's really cool. And, and the fact that you can pop something, it's almost kind of like an Overraptor in a little bit. Um, and then if it's sent from the uh, to the graveyard by a card effect, you can tar add an Evolution Spell card, uh, Evolution Pill Spell card from your deck to your hand. That's really cool. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of wild things that this card is going to do. Um, obviously, dinosaurs are kind of, uh, I wouldn't say 100% crippled right now, but they're not very good. So... I would probably say that this card is definitely a, a, a great support card for them. I'm sure in the future, if we get more dinosaur support cards, this card will definitely be at the forefront of, of whatever deck that is. The only issue is that you have to shuffle five of your banished dinos into the deck, and Miscellaneous Source, I believe it's at one right now, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure it's at one uh, based on the last list. Uh, definitely not being able to banish stuff uh, in abundance all the, like, constantly is a little bit of a, an issue for the deck, but being able to add yourself an evolution pill and um, have a little bit of, uh, I guess, resource management with this card, being able to get some back some of your advantage by putting those uh, monsters back into your deck is kind of cool. It's kind of like a pseudopod of avarice for the deck. Then we have this card. This is kind of cute. Desmania Devil. I was a huge Tasmanian Devil as a uh, fan as a kid, so um, if you guys know who t the Tasmanian Devil is, then uh, <laughs> you're old school like the old school. <laughs> uh, let's see. We got a... He's a... Earth Beast level 4 monster, 700, 1700 attack. When it destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can add a level 4 or lower beast monster from your deck to your hand. That's kind of cool. I don't really see this card seeing any play other than in like cubes. I don't really see. like th These effects aren't as useful anymore, like destroyed by battle type stuff. Uh, that's why cards like Guaiba aren't very good anymore. Uh, John Chimatsu. John Chimatsu, it's a. Wing Beast Flip Effect Monster. You can search it with the new Recite Starling card, but it says once per turn you can change this card in face down defense position, and when it's flipped you can draw a card and then discard a card. That's kind of cool. So it's a Dark World Dealings when it's flipped. I don't know how useful that is, but I, I guess you can do that. We have a Skull Diet, the Chained Draco Serpent, and it's a Link 4 2800 attack monster. It points up, down, and diagonal left and right. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, and it has to have two plus monsters with different names. That's kind of a... Uh, that's not really too off of what some cards currently uh, require for links. Let's see, you it gains the following effects depending on the types of the number of materials you use. So that's that's important, I guess. So if you use like two link monsters that are different, it allows you if a monster is normal special summon to a zone this card points to, it gains a little bit of stats during attack and defense. If you use three, you can special summon a monster from your hand once per turn, and then if you used four when it's link summon, you could draw four cards. 
then return three of them to the bottom of your deck in any order. That's absurd. Like, I like that. That's really crazy. <laughs> like, I feel like I could totally, if, if I could make this, I mean, obviously you're going to need uh, monsters with different names, but I don't think that's very hard to do. Like, even in a deck like Spirals, I feel like I can make this quite easily and just draw free cards. Um, and then, obviously, you have to put cards back. It's kind of like a big eye in some ways. A big eye slash... I don't, I don't know what else uh, is a good example, but this card's really cool. I like this card. This uh, I can see this card seeing a little bit of play. Linkage Hole allows you to, if you control a Link rating for a higher monster, destroy monsters your opponent controls up to the number of Link 3 or Link 3 rating or higher monsters you control. That's I guess it's kind of like a bad dark hole for Links in a way, so it's kind of cool, I guess. Uh, Revolve Boot sec Sector. Revolve Boot Sector. Uh, it's a field spell card, allows you, oh, and it's for rockets, or magic bullets, or magic bullets, whatever they're called, rocket monsters, <laughs> gain 300 attack and defense, I'm not, I, I keep thinking, they're probably different, I, I'm sure someone's gonna correct me on this, but I, I feel like they're the same, I don't know if they just keep giving them different names, but, uh, they gain some stats, you can sum, special summon two rocket monsters with different names from your hand and defense position, that's wild, dude, so, that effect is crazy, if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can special summon rocket monsters with different names from your grave and defense position up to the monster deficit. Dude, this card's really good. As a field spell, I think this is actually a really good field spell, unless I'm reading it incorrectly, but I think this card's really cool. It just gives you free monsters, and you can even summon them from your grave if you want to, if there's a deficit. That's pretty good. I think this card's really, really good. Um, Veral Refrigeration, or Boral Refrigeration. Uh, it's a normal trap. You can tribute a rocket monster, then pick a... Bro, Link Monster, you control, equip it to this card, and it gains the quick effect where you can target a monster you control during this turn. That monster cannot be destroyed by battle card effects. That's kind of cool, but it's kind of slow being a trap card. I feel there's better cards that do the same thing, honestly. Uh, we got Guy Dance, which is DD Warrior Lady and Warrior Digrapher dancing, I guess. That's kind of cool. Uh, you can select an opponent's unused main monster zones. While that zone is usable, your opponent would, if your opponent would normal special or set, so main monster zone, they must use that zone. This effect is applied until that zone becomes occupied. Um, I don't know how useful this is. I'm sure someone will find a way to use it. I, I don't know if this is good in Magic Bullets because I know they're like a column relate, uh, dependent archetype. But other than that, I'm not sure how important this, this card could be. I don't think it seems very good on, on the surface, um, at least based on what I'm reading. We have the giant Trunade that I told you guys about yesterday. You guys can go watch my video on that localized Trunade. I think this card's crazy. It's cards... Uh, it's basically a giant turn like honestly the 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 quote-unquote errata or redesign it doesn't really matter much it's it's still just giant turn i'm sorry it's still just giant turn as far as i'm concerned uh guardian's force it's an equip spell allows you when an opponent when an equipped monster declares an attack you can place a spell counter on this card it gains 500 attack and defense for each spell counter on it if the equipped monster be destroyed about or card effect you remove from play spell counter on the field instead. Eh, don't really care for it. Parthian Shot, when the battle phase ends now, it now becomes the end phase of this turn. That's kind of cool, and it's a counter trap. That's kind of cool. Let's see this card. The artwork actually looks pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to figure out what monsters these are. I feel like these are like the spiritual beast monsters, um, or the ritual beast monsters. Um, almost kind of looks like a window in some ways, but these, this kind of cool card, I'm not sure how relevant that'll be, because it is a trap card, and there's other cards that kind of do this in some ways, but not exactly the same, like the Great, uh, Great Horn of Heaven or Grand Horn of Heaven, the, the counter trap that lets you like stop a summon and then your opponent draws a card, but then it like ends the turn or whatever. Um, I think that was kind of cool, but this is kind of a similar card to that. I don't think it'll really see much play. Uh, sensor Differentiation. Each player can only control one monster of each type, send all other face-up monsters they control to the grave. So this is kind of like a new rivalry or goes and match rivalry, kind of in some ways. So I don't know how used this will be since we already have those cards, but it's another Floodgate card, so... I'm sure this will find its place. We have a Contacting C. So, okay, we got another Flying C remake, but in a different way. 2200 defense, 1500 attack, that's crazy. It's a level six, so I guess we're not we're not using that ourselves. Uh, when your opponent normally special summons a monster, you can special summon this card from your hand to your opponent's field in defense position, okay. Uh, if this card's controller would fusion, synchro, XYZ, or link summon, then you must use this card as a link material. Uh, I don't know how I feel about this card, to be honest. Like. I don't know, because I feel like it's so easy just to link summon that it's not going to matter. You're just basically giving yourself a free, your opponent a free material, to be honest. Like, I know that seems strange, but I feel like this isn't that good. The, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but on the surface, it doesn't feel very good. Like, yeah, Fusion Synchro XYZ would kind of suck, like, having to use this. But the fact that you can just link summon and then do whatever else you need after that, I don't know. I don't, that doesn't seem very good to me. Roll Reversal, if your life point is more than your opponent, swap life points with your opponent. Okay, I don't know why I would ever want to do that, but okay. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be some degenerate deck that tries to use that. 
Uh, we have inspect border. Uh, cannot be normal summoned while you can normal or special summon while you control a monster, but can be normal set each turn. Each player can only activate monster effects up to the number of times uh, or number of monster card types. Ritual fusion synchro. So basically, all the types among monsters on the field. So that's kind of interesting. It's kind of like a floodgate monster. This is kind of a cool monster. I kind of like this. But the fact that you can't normal or special summon while you control another monster kind of sucks. You could just summon this first and then summon what else you have via special summons. And it has really respectable stats, 2000 by 2000. This is a really cool monster. I really, really like this. Um, th I think this is a really good card, personally, on, surf on the surface. Uh, we have a vanilla zombie monster with 2000 attack. All right, that's kind of cool. I like the artwork. And finally, from this, we have... Da -da 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 -da. Oh, and it says TL Note. This card's lore is written entirely in hiragana, a very basic set of Japanese characters that children learn first before they learn the more advanced characters, implying that a child or ghost of one wrote it. We'll use only lowercase letters for the translation here for that reason. Okay, that's kind of cool, I suppose. Uh, and then we have a normal trap that says target one card you control, destroy that card. Okay. Oh, is this a Goki card? No, Gobaku. Friendly fire... Something. Okay, I, I target a card you control, destroy that card. I, I don't know how I feel about that, man. <laughs> but yeah, that's the Extreme Forces stuff, so let's get into the next couple stuff. We have uh, the Rarity Collection. This is uh, for the OCG currently. I'm not sure when, if, or when we'll be getting this. Uh, but I guess they're going to be getting a bunch of cards reprinted as Super Rares, to my understanding, over the Super Rare specification. I don't know, that's kind of just a weird translation, because this is translated uh, through Google, so... It says they're getting it February 10th on a Saturday. It's uh, it's 300 yen a pack, four four packs, blah blah blah. Box has 15 packs. Okay, that's. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I guess we'll see if this comes out for us. Next we have Security Dragon, which I'm actually interested in this card. I don't really care much about its effect, but it's a Link 2 generic monster and it's a Cybers that basically just says uh, you can only use its effect once per turn and once while it's face upon the field if it's co-linked. Uh, so basically with another Link monster, you can target a monster your opponent controls or turn a hand. So it's a compulsory evacuation device, really cool. Uh, making this, instead of Proxy Dragon, at the very top of your extra monster zone is finally good. I, I like being able to make this. This is a great card now that I can utilize my uh, Ancient Fairy Dragon if I have to make it first along with anything else. Um, I really like this card. I think this is a really cool card. Definitely going to be getting this and probably playing it. Um, yeah, we'll see when this comes out. I'm not sure when we're going to be getting this, but yeah. You can make a proxy dragon with your firewall. Uh, you can use make firewall dragon with your proxy dragon. So that's kind of cool. And it's a free compulsory if you ever have something co linked to it. So that's kind of useful. And then finally, premium pack 20. Uh, you're going to get manga cards and game original link monsters. So I don't know what that means. Uh, I suppose they're going to be recreating original monsters as link monsters. I'm not certain. But it's premium pack 20, which is crazy. We've only had two of them in the TCG. And. Uh, <laughs> They, those CGs had 20 of them. I wish we had more packs like these. I've always been a fan of like non-mainstream packs or non, um, non-core set packs. I don't know why I really enjoy them. Uh, da, da, da. It's going to be pre-sold at Jump Festa, held on December 16, 2017. So they're getting it this year. Uh, in addition to that, original Link monsters will also be included at this time. And yeah, so it's going to be short and sweet. That's basically it. Uh, I kind of went through all these cards a little bit slowly just because I wanted to talk about them more or less there's the real the real card i'm really interested in overall is obviously the localized trunade and the security dragon if i had to pick some cards those are probably my favorite cards out of all these by far uh, but i'm sure other people are going to like some of these other cards let me know what you guys thought of these cards i kind of want to talk about them and see which ones are useful which ones are kind of just average uh, this is all courtesy of ygo organization as usual you guys can go read up on it if you'd like to and uh, let me know, what do you guys think about these new releases? Tomorrow I want to do a video, I'll probably have it for you guys, because it feels like right now I'm probably not going to be going to the LA Regionals. I feel like I'm going to be staying here and hopefully going to a sneak peek. I'd rather go to that. And then I definitely want to get some footage of some openings, definitely want to get some of the cards. But I definitely want to do a discussion on Foolish Barrel Goods versus Double Summon, because that's a very popular debate right now. And some people are using neither of them. But uh, I kind of want to do a debate on this for Spiral players, as well as just in general. Uh, at least right now, not like in the vacuum of spirals, but just in general is like within the context of those decks, because obviously they're very different cards. Uh, but I think it's important to kind of talk about that uh, difference. So that's basically it. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Enjoy 
uh, the rest of my videos. I have more videos planned for you guys the rest of this week. Again, I'm having some issues for whatever reason. YouTube keeps uh, flagging my videos or basically demonetizing them after they get you know certain amounts of views. I don't know why. It's just that their system's having issues. I don't know if I'm the only YugiTuber that's getting hit by this. Um, so far, I haven't really heard about anybody else getting exposed to this kind of stuff. Uh, so it kind of sucks, but hopefully their system figures it out as soon as possible. And I'm hopeful because I don't want to just not do this frequently because I really enjoy making videos for you guys. And I'd really like to make a little bit of revenue so I can invest that back into my channel in terms of equipment and other stuff. So uh, yeah, at the very least, become a patron. Link is down below. You guys can win some cool rewards. And uh, that's basically it. Make sure you guys are part of the Baby Dragon Squad. And I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy, guys.